I uh, grew up on this farm. Um, my father got out of farming in the 80s like a lot of people did. And then when I was in high school, started running one farm for my dad that he still owned, just uh, 20 acres tillable and running ground from other people. And uh, I went to Michigan State and got my uh, bachelor's in agricultural business management. Uh, came back home, put up a 4,000 head hog barn, and then started running more ground. And then 2006, had an opportunity to actually buy the home farm back because this had been sold to other people in the meantime. And then started putting cattle back in here in about 2010. And uh, now the farm no longer had the hog barn. A farm 600 acres total, 400 acres certified organic. The other 200 acres primarily goes to raising corn to feed these guys. And we've taken uh, deacon calves that we buy locally in Mason County, which a deacon calf is just a baby bull. He's about a week old. Uh, we put him on milk for six weeks, and then we wean him off from milk, put him onto a pellet with a little bit of hay, and then we turn him onto this uh, finished feed ration, as we call it, which is mostly high moisture corn with a little bit of corn silage for uh, roughage which is good for their stomach being a ruminant animal and then uh once they're on the ration they come over in this barn and they go all the way down to the end where they're raised up to a fat cattle fat steer at about uh 15 1600 pounds on the hoof or that's the total body weight of the animal and from there we sell uh, custom freezer beef individual cuts and any steer that's not ordered by a customer ends up in Ravana at the livestock sale. The, the organic farming, uh, I have 400 acres certified organic, as I said earlier. Um, these guys are not organic, um, the cattle. That's something that uh, I've thought about and possibly looking at coming down the road, but I'm not there yet. It's, uh, it's a whole different process. However, these guys are all fed non-GMO corn. Um, I raise the corn myself. It's all uh, what we call conventional, non-GMO. There's no Roundup Ready, no BT, any of that stuff in the corn. And none of these guys are what, on the farming side, the cattle end, we'd call implant. Or uh, you might be more familiar with like the, the, the steroids. Uh, some of that stuff, people call it hormones. It is a kind of a hormonal steroid. But I don't do that. Uh, so they're quote-unquote kind of natural. And the organic crop side, uh, I got into that. Oh, it's already been about four years ago, going on five. Uh, and the biggest reason for going to the organic, to be honest, was just because there was a lot better margin. And uh, you could kind of see about two, 2015, uh, price of conventional crops were coming down. And it looked like, because, well, crop cycles, crop prices, cattle prices, um, they go in a cycle. 10, 11 years, 12, 15 years, there's always a cycle. And we were kind of here and you could just see us riding that train down. Um, so I went into the organic, hoping to capture a better profit margin. And it's, it's starting to work, it's a process. Um, there's a lot of things to learn. I definitely lost some money the first couple of years and the, the learning curve. But uh, now I'm kind of uh, excited about it. And there's some things I'm seeing on the organic farming side uh, happening in the soil that I've never seen happen in conventional. So I started in it uh, for the money, and now I'm excited about it for the science. Farming is an addiction that's in your blood if you're born into it. And I was born into it and uh, had several opportunities to pursue other endeavors, and I can't get out of this one. I'm farmer through and through, and no matter what, I'll be farming the rest of my life.